Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And if you like the analysis that I do every week, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Definitely like and subscribe. Um, just a free way to support the, uh, the channel. And uh, again, if you're new, uh, really our trade process will separate Trading 180 from, you know, the vast majority of other, um, uh, I guess, uh, weekly analysis videos that you might see on YouTube, Facebook, etc. Is the fact that we employ a combination of fundamental and technical analysis, and our fundamental analysis approach isn't what you would typically see from other traders, where they're just looking at forex factory um, data points. What we do is we look at at, um, uh, we establish value through um, macroeconomic data like inflation, interest rates, looking at the business cycle, GDP, as well as monetary policy and risk sentiment. And then we uh, can go to our technical analysis and uh, use a combination of supply and demand strategies like uh, capture pain relief and uh, stop hunt strategies to enter uh, with um, a uh, high degree, I guess, of um, of confidence when entering into trade. So um, what we wanna do first this week is really kind of just start off on what's coming up in the week ahead from a news perspective and then get into the fundamentals and technicals on each uh, chart. So looking at the week ahead, and we've got the US releasing the second estimate of the fourth quarter GDP alongside durable goods orders, personal income and outlays and PCE price index. So um, the fourth quarter um, second estimate, the first estimate came out I think around about 4%. So the second quarter estimate shouldn't be too far away from that. Other GDP um, updates to follow include those from Germany, France, Switzerland, India, Hong Kong, and Mexico. Elsewhere, the Eurozone Business Survey and sorry, the UK jobs report will be keenly watched. Yes, jobs report is definitely something that we look towards as well as um, uh, high unemployment means, or higher unemployment means uh, more of a recession and lower unemployment means um, uh, a growing economy potentially. So uh, as well as China house prices, Japan industrial production and retail sales and Australia's fourth quarter construction output, uh, central banks in South Korea and New Zealand will be deciding on monetary policy. So if you're trading the New Zealand dollar, uh, let's you know see what the, um, what the RBNZ have to say about um, what their future guidance will be, whether they're hiking, holding, cutting rates, what they're concerned with, um, introducing more QE or holding QE, et cetera, as that has an effect on the value of the New Zealand dollar, which has been on a bit of a tear as of recent. So moving on to the US dollar index and Dow Jones dollar index. Um, and so what we saw pretty much uh, last week, uh, we did see a bit of a gap up um, on, I think that must have been the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah. And we've pulled back into this demand zone and really just the, the dollar index is just a, a measure of dollar strength against a basket of currencies like the euro, the yen and the pound. And um, so this week we did have you know a bit of upside downside, um, but overall I think in the short term, and when I say the short term, I'm talking about maybe the one to three month period. Um, I think that the market is likely to range. Yeah, So I don't know exactly where the market is going to range from. Who knows? Nobody knows. But I think between this high here and this low, I think the dollar index will probably start to range because there's been some good news um, out regarding the, uh, the, uh, the dollar. And in fact, it could range from here and here as well. So... Um, for me, I use this as confluence, and if there is some bullish price action on the dollar index, it means that overall dollar strength should be coming into the market, and then you want to go to one of the dollar crosses, like the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, to look for potential confluences on your buy trade. So um, there is obviously some news, again, like I said, coming out this week regarding uh, the week ahead, so uh, fourth quarter estimates, but I do think that should potentially be uh, positive. Also, we did have um, last week 
uh, just a week just gone, the US economy surges into 2021 as sales output tops forecast. So um, there was uh, some US economy start at 2021 with a bang as retail sales and factory output accelerated and expectations continued to build for another jolt of government stimulus, setting the stage for what could be the best year of economic growth for nearly four decades. So, um, you know, expectations for gross domestic product um, growth increased for the first quarter and every subsequent three month period through mid 2022, according to the most recent monthly survey of economists by Bloomberg News. Economic growth this year is estimated to be the strongest since 1984 when Republican Ronald Reagan was president. So that should be a tick in the column of why you may want to potentially look for buying opportunities for the dollar because if the dollar starts to strengthen and um, as far as uh, the economy starts to grow then there will be demand for the you know dollar and then what you want to do is really just look to uh, trade the dollar against another country and currency that potentially may not be doing so well that's what's known as a divergence trade you're trading divergences why one country is doing well you want to buy that country and currency and then you want to sell a country that and the currency that isn't doing uh, too well so there's been some positive news surrounding um, the, the dollar as of recent um, and the prognosis of vaccine surge is coming with millions of doses promised. So new supply should help the pace of vaccinations double in the coming weeks. Again, why is this um, worth um, noting in this? But really because uh, if you have uh, the population being vaccinated, then um, you have less I guess um, the spread of the uh, virus is contained and then that affects GDP because people can get back to work some sort of normality. If you still have the fear on the spread of the coronavirus and you have you know continued lockdowns, then your economic growth and gross domestic product is gonna be delayed. So um, one of the reasons why the pound has been surging recently in recent times over the past you know uh, few months is because of this exact same thing. And we'll go into that when we get into the, uh, the pound. So um, the US for me, uh, potential buy again, nobody knows exactly where. All we do is we just understand that if this is a bargain and the market agrees with us that this area here is a bargain for the uh, for the dollar, then brilliant. If not, if prices, you know, dollar index comes down into that area there, then that's definitely gonna be a potential bargain depending on obviously if we still have some decent news out and the fundamentals, um, uh, say so because price is not value and value is not price people get this confused you can have something that is undervalued yeah um, and you would only know that you would really only know that if you understood what something uh, how to determine value so um, price can come down yeah but it just means that you can get in at a better price right that's what you're supposed to be uh, doing as, as, as traders um, is understanding value price action is not king because price can be manipulated and price is manipulated every day so how can something that is manipulated be the king it's not so <clears throat> Just understand that if this level doesn't work, if the dollar doesn't necessarily, you know, go up here, it means that a lot of the big banks uh, potentially are looking to buy the dollar cheaper, you know, um, and that's, you know, the, the, the theory. So you've got a lot more potential upside. Yeah. If that does happen, if you don't believe what I say, and um, again, this is not financial advice anyway, but you have your own fundamental analysis and own opinions on the dollar, then um, what you're looking for is sell trades. You're looking for short trades back up into um, that area of supply. If you get that confluence, of course, you're not trading the dollar index, you're just looking for confluences. Or if price does do something like this, let me just delete all of this, uh, this analysis. If it makes lower highs and lower lows, so let's say, for example, it breaks through that area of uh, demand, then you pull back to an area of supply, which would be here. And then you're looking for that confluence. Um, so for me, again, dollar continued potential buy um, for the for the short term, um, one to three months probably, um, unless something changes. And uh, yeah, let's uh, look forward to now the dollar yen. And the dollar yen, um, 
you know, this past uh, week or two has made, you know, higher highs. We've got a bit of demand right here. And uh, in a risk on scenario, we usually, uh, the, 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 um, the currency with the higher interest rate should win. And uh, the Japanese yen interest rate is actually minus 0 0.1 at the moment. And I think the dollar is actually uh, uh, 0 0.25. So you've got some, you know, if you're looking in a risk on environment to make a return on your money, what you're going to be looking to do buy the um, the Australian dollar, got that on the brain, the, uh, the, the US dollar or buy the Japanese yen. It's going to be the dollar all day long. So with that being said, um, if we do get any kind of pullbacks into a dem nice demand zone, that would be a decent uh, buy. Um, again, depending on uh, the strength of the dollar, because there is this overarching um, uh, sentiment that the dollar uh, is potentially getting weak as it, as it stops becoming really the, 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 the global reserve currency. Um, and uh, there's a shift away uh, towards the dollar dependence so that is the overarching and the the, the, the really kind of the medium to long term uh, view of the markets um, but in the short term doesn't mean in the short term that the, the, the price of the dollar can't go you know higher so let's see what happens there if risk off does start to come into the market and the uh, Japanese yen is a safe haven currency then what you're looking for is a pullback into any kind of you know supply zone a bit higher and then look for any kind of uh, short trades uh, moving on to the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss I'm actually in this uh, this this trade I've got involved um, in and around this area here so um, let's see if prices can continue to go you know higher and I do think uh, the dollar should want to go higher against the Swiss franc but who knows um, again a nice demand zone where price you know made new highs a strong demand there and then pull back into that zone and then we had a really nice um, opportunity to get long now again nobody knows how far prices will go but it just depends on um, whether the market agrees that this is an absolute bargain and if it does then we're just getting a bit of a pullback before potentially moving higher um, again if, if, if it's a case of you know prices do pull back this week and you know come down here longer term I do think that the um, the uh, Swiss franc um, is very expensive, and the Swiss National Bank have actually said themselves that you know they're well, they're intervening, and they also want a, actually a cheaper uh, Swiss franc, so they want prices to actually be up somewhere around here. In fact, they want it to be all the way up here if they can. So let's see what happens with uh, with the Swiss franc, and the Swiss franc is a risk off currency, meaning that if there is um, uh, uncertainty then it should want to strengthen so I think this zone here is actually a decent area to look for some short trades um, if risk off does come into the market so uh, the, I think for me the ultimate buy for the dollar though is going to be down into this 87 that's where that area there is is really 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 nice for a potential buy if we can get down there uh, moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD, we are really at some, you know, some some lows. We haven't seen these lows since 2018, April 2018. So, um, depending on, you know, the CAD for me was always a has always been a buy since we you know we are in a risk on environment. Um, Canadian dollar has been going from strength to strength, but do you want to be a buyer of the Canadian dollar in and around here? Probably not. So. Um, the two ways to kind of look at this would be either I think what I have to do is move this down here because we actually have made lower highs and lower lows so we've got a bit of supply there um, the first area to look for any kind of short trades would be in here and then you know if you're looking at obviously looking at daily supply zones but then going down into the lower time frames and looking for you know trades um, that would be the first area to look for Personally, I really kind of prefer um, prices to come all the way up to here before looking at getting <coughs> potentially short. But also as well on the flip side, if you are looking to buy the dollar, if you're looking at dollar strength, then in fact, this is a really nice uh, potential buy uh, trade uh, setup or area anyway that you want to look for a 
potential buy because this was a bargain back in you know January and if the dollar is going to potentially strengthen then that should be a decent buy technically from a fundamental perspective I'm not really um, keen on, on, on buying the uh, the dollar against another strong currency um, like the Canadian dollar so for me, it doesn't matter what the technical setup is. Uh, fundamentally, it's got to have some fundamental confluences. And uh, yeah, that's that's what that is. So what you saw here this week is a move down. Yeah. And then a move back up, more selling and, then, you know, a, a nice, a nice uh, day trade right there. But for me, I think that's the, probably the limit of the move. Or what you probably want to see is you want to see proof of value, so price to really kind of break through that area to prove that the uh, Canadian dollar is an absolute bargain there and the pullback into some sort of supply zone and then look for some sort of short trade. That's you know how I would play that. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and we've again come up to a nice, a really nice high. And this is going to be, you know, watched by a lot of traders because this is really the 2021 highs. Yeah, so this is the high of the year. So um, uh, we do have, uh, again, the uh, the Central Bank of New Zealand, the RBNZ, coming out and guide and, and basically looking to guide uh, monetary policy. Now, if they come out as very dovish or surprise the market, then you could see actually a really nice uh, short trade. And uh, I think as a technical setup, I'm always looking to buy at, you know, say always, but from a technical analysis perspective, I really like the um, the, the highs and lows of ranges. That's, that's really the optimum trade. Um, going into, uh, from a from buy trade perspective for the dollar, the US dollar, then you look, um, for the, sorry, New Zealand dollar, if you do get a pullback would be somewhere like here, but this would be a nice trade for the US dollar if we can get some dovishness for the New Zealand dollar and uh, again, some positivity around the US dollar <clears throat> this week. Um, moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar um, prices came up into a, a bit of a supply zone which basically was created in May 2018 and as I you know always say that um, what you want to do is when a supply zone has been created from you know years years ago uh, take that with a pinch of salt and the reason why is because whatever drove prices down here yeah, is not going to be the same thing fundamentally or risk sentiment wise that is going to drive prices down here so you have to be you know aware of that um, the pound again has been on um, a, a tear and it's really been mainly because uh, of the vaccine rollout so the, the market is always future and forward thinking so um, it's always thinking about what or focused I guess on um, on the next you know three to six to nine months it's not really focused on what what is now it's by the rumor sell the facts so if the rumor is that um, the, you know the the UK are vaccinating they're uh, you know, uh, rolling out the vaccine um, ahead and uh, on schedule or you know um, uh, ahead of everybody else then that just means that they should get their economy back on track sooner than, than everybody else which then means that um, the market is is pricing in that uh, that 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 scenario so um, sterling is the best performing major currency this year and the UK assets have benefited from a swift vaccine rollout yeah so again the pound surge for one uh, one dollar forty for the first time in nearly three years as investors bet the UK's rapid vaccine rollout will help pave the way for a reopening of the economy this year. I've been saying this, we've been in the group, in our private uh, Discord group, we've been saying this since last year that this is, you know, been the... Um, this has been the, one of the plays. The other thing about the, the pound, though, which has made it really quite difficult to trade, in fact, is this um, switch to uh, negative interest rates and whether they will or they won't. So even though, yes, the pound has been on a tear, it's been a difficult trade to, uh, to really take because um, you've had the uh, Bank of England or, or members of the Bank of England talk about negative rates, right? So BOE's, uh, I think you pronounce it Vileg here, or Vileg, um, gives the um, strongest backing yet for negative rates and negative rates. And this, and this, this, this um, gentleman is a rate setter. 
yeah so his opinion matters um, and he says that there's little QE can do to add stimulus and prefer sub-zero rates for dealing with labor market weakness so uh, this uh, this this policy maker um, is uh, a voting member and if he's voting for negative rates that isn't good for or say that isn't good but that should have an um, an effect of weakening the pound yeah so um an expensive pound during a recession is not desirable in fact people think that a stronger pound is, is good but it actually isn't especially when you're trying to um recover economically so um uh, uh, there's 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 a really a um a battle going on within you know the bank of england the board of members the board members um regarding the strength of the pound the recovery what traders think and also what the bank of england think and how they're going to balance the economy and jobs because like i said to make uh the the, the, the british and the uk economy competitive you're going to have to have a weaker pound and a strong pound isn't great so um negative rates um are you know, or, or basically, Bank of England has resisted global rates to push below zero, like you know, like the like Japan, the ECB, and Switzerland. So, um, yeah, it's been it has been a tough trade. If you have you know bought the uh, the pound um, and traded the pound higher and higher, you know, well done for holding that trade. It has been a bit of a tough one, um, but I think overall, uh, this is coming really to I think the limits of its move. So if you do want to get short on the pound, and I'm going to delete this uh, supply zone, what you want to do is, you know, look for, um, uh, you know, proof of value, proof that there is supply here, and then look for some sort of, you know, trade back up to a supply zone, which is which is going to be right here, and then look for some potential short trades because we've been in the trend for since, you know, since. Uh, since early September, this this up move and markets go from range, um, trending markets to ranging markets or accumulation phases, um, whatever you want to call it. So at some point, this the market has to you know agree where roughly price is, and it looks like one forty was you know a, a, a target. So let's see if we can get some sort of ranging market. And if we do range, then where we're going to range from, and this may be you know the area where you want to look for a ranging. Um, uh, ranging type setup if you're looking to continue to buy the british pound against the us dollar then it's basically a pullback into one of these demand zones i probably prefer if i was looking to trade this probably something down here as you've got some support and resistance as confluence uh, down into that zone right there so this 1376 area um, moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar so um, again a bit of a tough one um, not the clearest of divergences but there is in my opinion a divergence there between Europe and the US and uh, as we've already gone through the US is actually doing uh, decent yet the um, uh, the euro area uh, is weakening or weakened by lockdowns supply constraints so regions factories have been a stronghold for, for stronghold through the crisis firms becoming increasingly upbeat about recovery projects um, <clears throat> but business activity in the euro area um, uh, uh, euro area economy shrank for a fourth month in February as services struggled with continued lockdowns and factories ran into increasing supply constraints so um there's again some divergences going in there um as well as a potential rollout of the vaccine so again supply constraints so where you've got one country that potentially is looking to um uh, to, to grow you've got another country that potentially may be a bit offside when it comes to um, their, their GDP or lagging when it comes to GDP so um, with that being said if I'm looking to potentially buy the dollar um, hopefully there should be some good news or there is some good news and you know um, Europe is lagging behind then the idea is hopefully we see prices continue at least to the downside who knows what's going what's, what what will happen um but you know that's pretty much the idea um we're already a lot of the guys in our group um private group are already in this trade to the short side and let's see you know what happens um here and again if that's if that doesn't work out it's already it's okay it's only one trade you're looking at you know a bit of a fresher area around this one two two area um, price zone to look for short trades and if not 
then you've got that. And if the, if your idea is correct on the euro strengthening, or sorry, the, the dollar strengthening against the euro and the euro weakening against the dollar, then you've got a lot of downside potential for that to play out. A, 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 a really nice uh, uh, trade to the short side. If Europe does start to grow though, um, and uh, things turn around for Europe, the European economy in, in the short term, then I honestly think that the euro is definitely a continued buy. So um, I will switch my uh, fundamental bias and, and directional bias depending on um, the overall uh, fundamentals. So um, I do think that if prices do come down here eventually, and let's say, for example, we get some really good news out in Europe, then in fact i think uh um the euro the euro may be a potential buy but for now short term wise i'm looking at uh, short trades on the euro dollar um moving on to euro yen and the euro yen we've had uh, well that zone didn't you know really work out and that was uh, probably due to um again in a in a risk on environment probably the euro is the one to buy so it doesn't matter how much technical confluences you may have um, if you know the the market sees the value of the euro as being higher there's no technical analysis that's going to stand in the way of that um, so what you're looking for now is pull back into a demand zone if you want to get long on the euro that's quite a, that's actually a very nice zone to get long on if you're looking for short trades and you're looking for again a pullback for supply to appear somewhere around here that would be where supply would be and then you're looking for a pullback into supply after it's done its move and then looking for a short trade in there Aussie dollar so Aussie dollar has gone again from strength to strength look at this um, the Australian dollar has really been um, a buy and again um, the guys in, in our in our in our discord group um, have known about this for um, quite a while uh, we were long on the um, uh, the Australian dollar from uh, like last year October November once the uh, the risk on sentiment came in the vaccine rollout and in fact uh, going back to you know uh, a post or two from the 24th of November where we were talking about the uh, the um, uh, the Australian dollar and there's an article or one of the many articles that we were that we were looking at for example buying um, the Australian dollar and uh, it says the boost of the global economy economic growth in 2021 should, should benefit the Australian dollar it says analysts at investment bank Goldman Sachs who have told clients the currency buying the currency forms one of the top trades for the year ahead so this was last year and this is not just one analyst saying this it was uh, several analysts saying this, which we done our research, and uh, we understood why as well. It's no just, it's no good just looking and reading what analysts say. You have to understand as well why that you know play is gonna you know uh, is is likely to take shape, right? So from you know this was like twenty fourth, and you've seen pretty much what happens here. And again, nowhere will you see, nowhere will you see him mention anything to do with Elliott Wave. Or um, you know any kind of Fibonacci trades. It's all fundamental analysis. Yeah, it's talking about. Um, he talks about Commonwealth currencies, right? Tend to perform well when the global outlook improves due to their relatively high exposures to global trade. Both Canada and Australia are handling COVID fairly well, and their central banks should be done cutting rates. All fundamental analysis nothing to do with the technicals right technicals should be used as just a way to you know enter your trade once you determine your fundamental bias yeah and these are the smartest guys uh, that are saying these things not you know um, uh, these uh, these so-called um, technical analysis uh, guys who just literally think that um, you know fundamentals don't work they just don't know how to trade the fundamental analysis um, so when you've got situations like this going on <clears throat> doesn't mean it's going to keep going higher etc because there is potential strength for the dollar coming in so just be you know be mindful of that but overall that is going to be the buy trade if for example we do get something where we get proof of value for the uh, US dollar then 
this actually, if your prices kind of do something like this and then come back to that zone, that would actually be a decent selling opportunity as well. Because again, we've been in a trend for, 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 for quite a while and a strengthening US dollar um, uh, could lead to a ranging market. So, but we'd want to see that, you know, um, on price first and play out on price first before looking at getting short because if we look back there's really no major levels um, or no major supply zones that I'd be interested in um, I really want to see proof of value first before looking at any type of short trades but the path of least resistance at the moment is to the upside so this is going to be your first area to look for any kind of long trades and if prices do come down here that's going to look like a bit more of a bargain um, Aussie Yen and Aussie Yen again, same thing. This was really the trade, Aussie dollar, um, sorry, Aussie Yen. Uh, really, really nice trade. And again, in a risk on environment when um, everything is, uh, when investors are looking for a return, when there's a lot of um, you know certainty, um, then that's brilliant. And a risk off environment, yeah, the, uh, the Japanese Yen does well because uh, it acts as a safe haven when there's lots of fear uncertainty you know and doubt so but you haven't seen that with the vaccine rollout global recovery and this is why you see prices trend so what you're looking for is a pullback into that zone there or you're looking for a pullback into the zone there or even a zone here so again if prices do come back into these zones um, and the, the fundamentals are still the same then just look at it as um, more of a bargain price for you to get you know long on those trades because again price is not value and value is not price um, looking at gold so gold finally um, we have come down into an area a very interesting area um, for gold now there has been fundamentally one sec here we go so gold goes from a star commodity to laggard in shocking reversal um quite sensational but gold has began the year with lofty lofty expectations on the back of uh record highs and its biggest annual gain in a decade instead the precious metal is off to the worst start in 30 years i mean that doesn't really you know mean anything what really <clears throat> you should be looking at is understanding um things like inflation if you believe that inflation yeah, is coming back into the market and what is inflation inflation is really a high inflation or higher inflation is is currency devaluation yeah um then gold is a hedge against inflation so um yes in the short term you may have this start to happen but for anyone who's who understands the longer term game this is an absolute bargain and when you think about uh, the, where, where gold was a bargain from last year so prices contained between this low and this high all we've had is a pullback to what is known as fair value yeah between an expensive area because that was obviously expensive for gold if it wasn't expensive then prices would have went higher and this was an absolute bargain area and if we understand that to be an absolute bargain because prices went higher you can just proof right proof that this was an absolute bargain so between an expensive area and a bargain area is fair value so all we are really at is is a fair value area so anything below this if you consider um you know the fundamentals um with with the amount of money printing that's been going on qe going on right and the devaluation of currencies if you're still a believer in that and you want to you know trade that analysis then um, this is a decent area to look to load up on gold and the cheaper you go or well, the more prices go down is the more that this looks like an absolute bargain because anyone who didn't load up last year yeah um, or anyone who's basically cost averaging down everyone who bought here and bought here and then basically all you do is you're cost averaging as you can as prices go lower yeah um, these are seen as, as bargain areas right bargain if you again believe that there is um, dollar devaluation currency devaluation in general and yes I do believe in the short term that the dollar may want to you know rise in value which is you know probably causing something like this to happen doesn't mean that you know because the dollar rises that the gold is going to go down you can have gold and the dollar go up in you know in price at the same time but the point is, is that fundamentally what is driving gold at the moment could just be 
um, <clears throat> again, short term um, sentiment, but look at this as a, if you are anyway, look at this as a potential um, buying opportunity for the uh, for the long term, or for the, at least the medium to long term. So let me just clear some of this analysis up. And uh, again, this is not financial advice, it's just my opinions. Um, please do your own research. So a really nice buying opportunity, I think, here. And uh, if you are looking to continue to sell gold, then you are looking at this area here for a sell trade. So there's supply there. So that would be the area to look for potential short trades. But for now, I think this is decent. If this price does come down even to down here, it's just going down into the lower time frames to look for some technical setups if you haven't got involved in you know anything around here so um so guys that's it for this week again please don't forget to like subscribe and share with your uh, fellow trading colleagues um and until the next video i hope you have a great trading week take care